So my first question is about a very big piece of news recently, which is Facebook's Libra coin, um, or the, the Facebook-powered coin, Libra. What do you think the significance is of that development uh, for the industry in general, and how, how do you think it will change what we're seeing so far? I think it's great for uh, cryptocurrency and blockchain technology in general that um, a company as huge as Facebook is taking it, uh, it seriously, taking blockchain technology and cryptocurrency seriously enough to launch its own coin. I think it will be great what, what they, they do. Um, it's already interesting seeing how they've innovated with their own uh, smart contracts. Um, language, uh, you know, their plans to move to proof of stake, like all these decisions have already been really interesting to see. Um, I don't think Libra can compete with, with Bitcoin. I think there are two different things. I think it actually can help uh, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Libra is not going to be uh, permissionless. Uh, you're, you're going to have Facebook approving the 100 validators ar around the network. Uh, so um, it's not also private. I think there, there's a chance Facebook will be able to, to access and use uh, your data like it already is. <laughs> and because of all those things, it's not censorship resistant like Bitcoin and Ether and other cryptocurrencies. And I think that's the most important part about cryptos themselves. So um, I don't think it can compete that directly in, in, that, in that sense. So it's not... Um... It's not solving the same use case, is basically what you're right. saying. Yeah. I think it, it is solving one use case, which is to enable um, you know, cross-border transfers easily. I mean, right now we have local country um, transfers you know, pretty, pretty well resolved, at least in the US, with uh, things like PayPal and Venmo, but um, transferring value across borders is or is still um, very difficult in the traditional financial world. Um, it can be done with with Bitcoin and I think it's you know one of the important use case cross-border transfers and I think that's where uh, Libra will be making making a, an impact. While it doesn't compete with Bitcoin, it does compete with traditional banks, uh, with other fintechs, um, with PayPal and Venmo like I mentioned. Um, so, so yeah, I think Facebook does have a good chance of solving, you know, just like value transfers, making it just easier to do. So you mentioned competing with other banks, and there was also news this week about uh, JPN Coins launch date, which is set for mm -hmm. later this year. And I'm wondering, I guess, how would you compare those two coins or those two developments? Is it worth comparing and like basically the same question about JPM coin. What are your thoughts on that? So I think JPM coin is, is a bit different. It's like in another league um, in terms of impact. I think its impact is, is less because um, JPM coin, coin is aimed at institutional clients. And I, I understand a very reduced number of institutional clients. I think it's, you know, th they're still in, in the very, very early stages um, of actually having it become more widely used within the bank. So, so yeah, JP, JP Morgan is obviously a, a huge bank, but I don't think it's, it's in everyone's lives as much as Facebook is. Um, like people use different banks. So speaking about Bitcoin, back to the, the decentralized <laughs> cryptocurrencies, what do you think about the recent rally that we've seen, uh, we've seen it with Bitcoin and in general in the crypto market? Um, do you have any sort of like thoughts about what's driven that um, or expectations for where it's going? Because we, we've seen a couple of predictions recently, um, new predictions from Anthony Pompliano talking about Bitcoin hitting I believe talking about talking about Bitcoin hitting 100k by 2021, and Tom Lee, who often makes predictions, saying that um, Bitcoin would easily pass its all-time highs of 20,000. And I'm wondering what what you think about what's going on in the past week or so. 
I think the recent rally has a lot to do with the things we've been talking about, you know, uh, Facebook, JP Morgan, just big companies um, looking at, at um, blockchain technology and, and cryptocurrencies. Um, but also we've seen volume increase in places like Hong Kong and Venezuela, where people continue to use um, Bitcoin as a censorship resistant um, currency. So I think all those um, all those uh, things are surfacing news, are making headlines. People are people are, are looking at these news and saying or, or realizing uh, cryptocurrencies aren't dead. Um, they're you know they're still thriving. Um, people still believe that this technology can make an impact, and and so they start to buy again. And it's just like this you know virtuous. Um, cycle that we're getting into again with with crypto and will continue to have value in in the long term of course it will be very volatile so uh you know whenever people ask me should i buy um i say if you believe in it sure uh but you know it will come with ups and downs and you know I think it's so risky that nobody should be holding more than they can afford to lose at this point. What's your opinion overall of mainstream media's coverage of the cryptocurrency and the blockchain industry in general? You know, I, I, I've seen it evolve and, and become better and better. I think when when I started covering myself, like at Bloomberg in, in 2017, um, I didn't know much about this. Uh, yeah, like maybe I had um, some some general knowledge, um, but you know, by the end of 2017, I knew a lot more. And I think you know, many journalists went through kind of that that same evolution. Um, and and I've seen that uh, and I, I've seen that in in coverage. Like I think it's improved. And I think as we continue to see these big companies embrace blockchain technology and um, launch different their own cryptocurrencies maybe people will be forced to to take it seriously and and we'll see more dedicated cryptocurrency teams more knowledgeable editors and, and reporters i wanted to also ask you a little bit about your upcoming book which as i understand is about ethereum mm -hmm. could you just give a brief summary of the topic of the book and other than ethereum and uh maybe talk a little bit about why you decided to write it Sure. Okay. So, uh, yeah, my book is on the history of Ethereum. It's a, a non-technical book focusing on um, the early days and kind of the backstory of how uh, the second biggest cryptocurrency was created. And I decided to write it uh, because, like I mentioned, like covering this like huge bubble in 2017, at the end of the year, I knew I had witnessed something really important. Um, and I had always wanted to write a book, so <clears throat> I, I looked at the cryptocurrency space and said, you know, this is my chance to, to, to write a book, like this is something that's important, that will have a lasting impact, um, I think it deserves to be documented in a more permanent way, and I thought that Ethereum was <clears throat> the most interesting story to, to be told. Um, I think the story about Bitcoin has been told uh, really well and um, many times the story of Ethereum hasn't really been told at all and I think it's really uh, important like it, it's already made an impact in um, the blockchain space uh, bringing um, it forward from you know being a way to transfer money from being a, a way to to have uh, smart contracts and decentralized applications and and bring um, just functionality uh, just be, be, uh, enabling money to become more functional, um, more programmable. So I, I think you know whether it like wins or or not um, remains to be seen. But it's already made an impact. Coin Telegraph, like, subscribe, and hodl.